The Michael K. Show, 98.7 ESPN and Yes. And while Michael is finishing up his duties with the Yankees-Nationals game, by the way, John Carlos Stanton has put one in the bullpen. It's 5-4 Nationals. We'll get Michael in a while. But listen, you leave me at the helm. You know what I'm going to do? Bring on someone amazing, like the 16-time world champion, the two-time Hall of Famer, maybe the greatest to ever lace up a pair of boots. Proud to call him a friend, the nature boy, Rick Flair. Rick, how are you? I'm great, man. How are you, Peter? Uh, I am doing well. I was, I was obviously uh, super bummed to hear the news about Terry Funk yesterday, and and much like you, I just feel he's someone who deserves his time. He's the kind of guy who could get overlooked by the mainstream, but man, Rick, he's one of the absolute greatest to ever do it. And I just wanted to give you a moment to share some of your thoughts on the late great Terry Funk. Well, you know, everybody got mad. Uh, not mad at me, but I, mean, not, I shouldn't say that. Nobody got mad, but people. I knew, I pointed it out last night to um, ESPN with a tweet saying that, you know, it, 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 it just to me, it's like a, a lack of respect. I wasn't singling out football players or baseball players or whatever, but it just, it, it, they always are, not always, but. It seems like you always just want to talk about the negative things. Does that make sense? I mean, it's yeah, a yeah, lot of negative. yeah. And then, and then when you lose someone like who's a who's a legend like this, I, I understood your point. You're like, hey, let's yeah. take a minute to celebrate someone. Yeah, and in, in, in our world, in our world, it's um, yeah, he's Mickey Mantle. You know, does that mm-hmm. make sense? Oh, yeah. So, I mean, he, yeah. he was that spectacular. I played. Did you see the video I played today? Yeah. Yeah. Which one when you posted yeah, the forever one? Or, uh, no, they had a combination of stuff, but it's uh, all of the, like our I quit matches, and we we had some classic man. We went to war. I used to hit him to them. <laughs> it was a war. It was real. And man, he wasn't the blade. Neither was I. <laughs> What? Which one? But which I, one I, stands out the most? Is, is Wrestle War '89 what you think of the most? Like, what? What is your main memory when you think of you and Terry Funk? Uh, I, it's, it's a it's a tie between Wrestle War and uh, the uh, I Quit match. I don't know. They're, they're both are damn good. I look back at them now and I go, you know, there, nobody was doing moonsaults, <laughs> but man, it was, it was a war. We were slugging it out, and. Uh, he enjoyed it too. I mean, I, I guess people now would say, "God damn, you guys are stiff." But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and also, can you tell me this? If people don't know, the the spot that you guys did back in '89, where he pile drives you through a table, that was that not a thing. Break. And the table didn't break. Yeah, it wasn't through. You're right. I apologize. <laughs> Peter, Peter, I was there. I almost broke my neck. Because, so did you? I said, what are you going to do? What's the physical? What's the, they call it physicality. I said, what are you going to do with me? He said, ah, ah, just trust me. So he threw me out on the floor. And he went over and cleaned out the table. I said, oh, God, here we go again. And he threw me up on the table. And he said, oh, just hang on. I got you. I go, let's read the movie. You communicate. And boom, he dropped on his ass. And the table did not break. He almost broke my neck. And that shit, yeah. It was, oh, my God. I couldn't turn my head for a week. Now, can you can you tell me uh, just quickly? Like I, I, I never Terry, knew, I never got Terry to know Funk the man. No, tell me about Peter. My yeah. Terry Funk was hardcore before there was hardcore. <laughs> oh, I know. I mean, that's someone called up yesterday and asked me, you know, where he stands in terms of the most hardcore. I said, well, he's the king of it. I mean, there there is no Mick Foley yeah. as Mi- as Mick would tell yeah. you any moment he gets. There there is no Mick Foley without uh, Terry Funk. There's no Sabu. Terry. There's none of these guys yeah. could have existed without Terry Funk. Yeah, and the the thing that people have forgot is when you know, that that character in '89 was completely different. Um, um, was completely different than um, the Terry Funk that was the world champion. Does that make right. sense? Yeah, of course. Terry Funk, Terry Funk, the world champion. Just wore regular tights, then wear the long boots. It's like he, it's like he had two different careers, and uh, that's when I learned how to shop. Because I was watching Terry Funk work one night, and 
somebody had his arm right, and he started chopping the guy with his right hand with his with his left hand. And I said, Dad, that looks <laughs> that looks pretty cool. And that's basically where I learned I learned that from Terry. I mean, there wow. was so much to learn. He could make you laugh. I don't know if you, if you watch a video today, that one guy where I snuck pretty hard, and he turns around in a circle <laughs> and walks right back and do another one. <laughs> I looked at him. He cracked me up in the ring. He could just walk over and fall through. <laughs> and, Rick, was he, was, he, was he as lovely a guy as he seemed to be? Because I didn't know him. Oh. I only saw Beyond the Mat, and he just seemed like the most lovely man. Oh, my God, the best. We had more fun. I mean, traveling up and down the road with him, I'll, I'll give you a classic a classic story. And he, well, he won't mind me telling us. So uh, I lived in Charlotte at the time. He's the world champion. Greg Valentine and I are, are the world tag team champions. And, and Jim, Jimmy Crockett is the order, right? So we bought a bottle of Everclear. And one of those Australian beers. Well, Foster's Lager beer, right? Mm-hmm. So <laughs> we were chugging both, right? And, and Valentine had that long hair. And <laughs> lit his hair on fire every time. <laughs> and he'd get it out. We'd drive there five miles, and he'd light his hair on fire. <laughs> and <laughs> by the time we got to Charlotte, <laughs> We can't. We stopped at a stoplight. Right, it's late at night. No cars or anything. I don't. Maybe a few. He gets out of the car, takes off all his clothes, and puts on the world belt. And he stood out in the middle of the road like he was directing traffic. It was traffic. Found time to turn left. So, well, I took him back to my house with me and uh, my my wife was gone, Leslie. And um, so I had, a, I had a pit bull, a half pit bull, half bull mass of it. Was really, not, it was it was really, it, it really good with the family, but it wasn't good with strange people. He didn't know. Right. No so strange men. Jumps, sure. Yeah, he jumps over the privacy fence and he bites Terry in the nose. So Terry goes into my house, takes it, and he got his clothes off, right? He puts a knife. With his teeth, like he's a pirate, right? And he's crawling around in the backyard with the New York Times and he gets that dog. And my wife walks in the door with her girlfriend, and I'm passed out on the kitchen floor. Not ever clear will kill you, right? And she goes, she goes, oh my God. Uh, this is my, uh, oh, I put, oh, I put the babysitter, uh, was with Megan in her bedroom. I was, Megan was not alone. And uh, that, that's my Good. husband, unfortunately. And, that, and that's the world champion. Terry <laughs> <laughs> Crawling she, around in the backyard with a knife in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so she took all my clothes, threw them out in the front yard. So me and Terry picked up my clothes, threw them in the trunk of my Eldorado, and I don't even remember driving to the downtowner. I woke up in the morning, and this is the way the world champion traveled. I mean, this is this is an average day for even even like me in the old days. Maybe I, I, I probably was even worse. But I woke up in the morning. I didn't know where I was. I couldn't remember any of it. And funked it on a plane to another town. <laughs> wow. I mean, listen, there are a lot of things in that story that are surprising. You getting your throws, your your clothes getting thrown on the lawn by a woman, not surprising. Terry Funk yeah. on, on all fours with the knife in his mouth. Hey, oh, that is something. Hey, hey, that wasn't the first time. <laughs> I know, I nor was it the last. <laughs> oh, right. hey, you Nate. They <laughs> make me laugh. These are the kind of things that Terry White. I, I just love riding with him. I, I bet I asked him five times a day, I think I'll be a world champion. I think I'll be a world champion. I, mean, I drove him nuts. He said, Dad, it'll be your time, kid. It'll be your time, kid. He's <laughs> talking to me like, he's only five years older than me. Yeah, so, 70, 79 years old when we lost him. Well, Rick, thank you. I just wanted you know, to pop you on I'll, for a I'll, few I'll, minutes. Yeah, I'll be 75, man, on, uh, in February. So yeah, I don't think I will think about that. Hey, one, right? Rick, you gotta have a you gotta have a something. I, I I hope you do a something, and I want an invitation to a seventy fifth birthday party for the Nature Boy. Oh, 
I'm going to have it. You, you get it. I'm throwing my own. <laughs> oh, please. I'm, making this every, I'm throwing my own party. <laughs> uh, Nate, you got to do it. We, we celebrate you every day. Thanks for jumping on with us. We appreciate you. Uh, thank you. Much respect to you, sir, okay? Always, Rick. Hope Take care. Too. All right, there he is, the nature boy, Ric Flair. And listen, I know there's some people, I'm, I'm going to be real with you guys. I know there's some people who are very confused. They went, why did we just hear a story about a man crawling on all, floor, on, on all fours in the backyard with a knife in his teeth? And I understand you didn't get it. But I'm going to explain to you that, trust me, when it's all said and done, getting to get stories like that from someone like Ric Flair uh, to talk about someone like Terry Funk is a cultural moment that must happen. And I'm proud to be the conduit of that moment.